Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian D'Souza and I am the author of Kid, A History of the Future. Kid, A History of the Future is a kind of time travelling adventure story set in two places. Number one, the kind of Dickensian dystopia of Soho in London in 2078. And number two, uh, our current present. 2021, London 2021, and the life of a young girl called Isabel Parry. Basically, uh, Josh Kid Jones, our main character, discovers that a iPhone left to him by his father enables him to communicate through Instagram back in time to our time now, to 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 the present day, and in so doing, hopefully, uh, change the future for the better. Basically, I was inspired to write Kid because one day, seriously, this actually happened. I was walking through Soho and it was about five years ago. So if you can imagine, we were all using Blackberries then, not iPhones. So now it will probably be even worse. I was walking through Soho and I kept bumping into people and I thought, is this because I'm really, really small and nobody notices me, which is usually the case. Um, But actually, as it turned out, it was because we were all on our phones, living in our palms and in this kind of virtual world that exists on 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 telephones. And I began to think if you if you take that and you combine it with like the devastating effects of climate change that have only got worse and worse and worse and are continuing to get worse and worse and worse. The natural conclusion that you draw is that we're all going to end up living in a kind of hermetically sealed box in a kind of virtual reality world because this world is just going to be totally and utterly wrecked. Um, Hopefully what I've done by presenting a a bit of a gloomy vision of the future is inspire people to affect change now in 2021 so that we never reach uh, the world of KID and the offliners in 2078. Having just finished this book or having finished it a year ago, having spent five years writing it, my advice to young or or new authors is to absolutely never, ever give up, to never stop, to try and write something down, whether it be a sentence, a paragraph or a chapter every single day. And if you don't, don't beat yourself up about it, but just return to the desk, return to the page as frightening and terrifying and as as lonely a place as that may be. And never, ever take no for an answer. This book was turned down by every single publisher, every single publisher in the UK. And so I could have just said, okay, well, that's it. It's going to Let's shelve it. Five years work, a book that I've written for all of the people that I believe care about, you know, making the world a better place and not turning our backs on it. All of the people that have supported me throughout the journey, I could have just shelved it. But what I decided to do with my friend Hugo um, was start a publishing company. And we did that. And it was the best decision I ever made because uh, it's now out and people seem to be being amazingly kind about it and lots of people seem to be buying it and it seems so sad that there are so many kind of uh, hoops to jump through there just are in life but you just got to jump through them and if you can't get through them go around them find another way no is never an option if i was stranded on a desert island which three books would i take Well, uh, gosh, there are a lot of books I'd want to take. I think I'd need to take things that like made me feel like there was a world out there, that there was, there was something else but me in this desert island. Uh, so I wasn't stranded. I think I'd take my diary from when I was a kid or like my diaries, if you can do that together, I compile a compilation of my diaries, the collected works, um, so that I can remind myself that once upon a time I did actually do things with other people and other human beings are around somewhere and and there were adventures that were had. Second thing, I think I'd bring bring an atlas just to be like, wow, you know, be able to see and imagine myself in all all of the extraordinary places uh, on Earth without actually being there. Third book... 
I don't know. There are so many. I think it would probably have to be Alice in Wonderland because I really, really, really adored being read that book when I was a little boy by my mum and dad and it would take me right back there to my cosy happy place in my little kind of little little bed um as a young kid in the countryside yeah Alice in Wonderland that would be nice (laughs) 